Good morning. This is PJ. I'm in my office. I've got kick coffee today with it being Monday. We're settling in for our lectionary reading. I may need to take a sip or two of coffee for our lectionary reading. It's a lengthy one today, so you might want to settle in as well. Three readings. Psalm 35, 11 through 28 is our psalm reading. Exodus 35, 1 through 29 is our Old Testament reading. Then Acts chapter 10, verses 9 through 23 are going to be our New Testament reading. Let us listen in to the scripture for the day. Psalm 35. Hostile accusers appear out of nowhere. They stand up and they badger me. They pay me back misery for mercy, leaving my soul empty. When they were sick, I dressed in black. Instead of eating, I prayed. My prayers were like lead in my gut, like I'd lost my best friend, my brother. I paced, distraught as a motherless child, hunched and heavy-hearted. But when I was down, they threw a party. All the nameless misfits of the town came chanting insults about me, like barbarians desecrating a shrine. They destroyed my reputation. God, how long are you going to stand there and do nothing? Save me from their brutalities. Everything I've got is being thrown to the lions. I'll give you full credit. When everyone gathers for worship, when the people turn out in force, I will say my hallelujahs. Don't let these liars, my enemies, have a party at my expense. Those who hate me for no reason, winking and rolling their eyes, no good is going to come from that crowd. They spend all their time cooking up gossip against those who mind their own business. They open their mouths in ugly grins, mocking, Ho, 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 I thought you'd get away with it. We've caught you. Hands down. Don't you see what they're doing? Uh, you're not going to let them get by with it, are you? Not going to walk off without doing something, are you? Please, get up. Wake up. Tend to my case, my lord. My Lord, my life is on the line. Do what you think is right, God, my God. But don't make me pay for their good time. Don't let me say to them, Ha ha, we got what we wanted. Don't let them say, We've chewed them up and spit them out. Let those who are being hilarious at my expense be made to look ridiculous. Make them wear donkey ears. Pin them with the donkey tail. Who made themselves so high and mighty? But those who want the best for me, let them have the last word. A glad shout! And say over and over and over, God is great. Everything works together for good for his servant. I'll tell the world how great and how good you are. I'll shout hallelujah all day, every day. And that was our psalm reading. Our Exodus reading is Exodus 35, 1 through, 1 through 29. Maybe I shouldn't have drank that coffee. And that is our Old Testament reading. Once again, from Exodus 35, building the place of worship is the headline. Moses spoke to the entire congregation of Israel, saying, These are the things that God has commanded you to do. Work six days, but on the seventh day will be a holy rest day. God's holy rest day. Anyone who works on this day must be put to death. Don't light any fires in your home on the Sabbath day. Moses spoke to the entire congregation of Israel saying, This is what God has commanded. Gather from among you an offering for God. Receive on God's behalf what everyone is willing to give as an offering. Gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet material, fine linen, goat's hair, tans ram skin, dolphin skin, Acadia wood, lamp oil, spices for anointing oils, and for fragrant incense. 
onk stones and other stones for setting in the ephrod and the breastplate. Come, all of you who have skills, come and make everything that God has commanded. The dwelling with its tent and cover, its hook, its frame, its crossbars, post and bases, the chest with its poles, the atonement cover and veiling curtain, the table with its poles and implements, and the bread of the presence, the lampstand for the giving light and its furnishings, and lamps, and the oil for lightning, the altar of incense with its poles, the anointing oil, the fragrant incense, the screen for the door at the entrance of the dwelling, the altar of the whole burnt offering with its bronze gates and poles and all of its implements, the wash basins with its base, the tapestry hangings for the courtyard with the post and the bases, the screen for the courtyard gate, the pegs for the dwelling, the pegs for the courtyard within their cords, the official vestments for ministering in the holy place, the sacred vestment for Aaron, the priest, and for his sons as serving as priests. So everyone in the community of Israel left the presence of Moses. Then they came back, everyone whose heart was roused, whose spirit was freely responsive, bringing offerings to God for building the tent of meetings, furnishing it for worship and making the holy vestments. They came, both men and women, all the willing spirits among them, offering brooches, earrings, rings, necklaces, and anything made of gold, offering up their gold jewelry to God. And anyone who had blue, purple, and scarlet fabrics, fine linen, goat's hair, tan leather, and dolphin skins, brought them. Everyone who wanted to offer up silver or bronze as a gift to God, brought it. Everyone who had Acadia wood that could be used in the work, brought it. All of the women skilled at weaving brought their weaving of blue and purple and scarlet fabrics and their fine linens. And all the women who were gifted in spinning spun the goat's hair. The leaders brought onyx and other precious stones for setting in the ephod and the breastplate. They also brought spices and olive for the lamp oil, anointing oil and incense. Every man and woman in Israel whose heart was moved them freely to bring something for the work of God through Moses, had commanded them to make, brought it, a voluntary offering for God. And that ends our Exodus reading that was for the Old Testament. Our New Testament reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 9 through 26. Let us listen in. The next day, as the three travelers were approaching the town, Peter went out on the balcony to pray. It was about noon. Peter got hungry and started thinking about lunch. While lunch was being prepared, he fell into a trench. He saw the skies open up. Something that looked like a huge blanket, lowered by ropes at its four corners, settled on the ground. Every kind of animal and reptile and bird you could think of was on it. Then a voice came. Go to it, Peter. Kill and eat. Peter said, uh-uh, oh no, Lord, I've never so much as tasted food that was not kosher. The voice came a second time. If God says it's okay, it's okay. This happened three times, and then the blanket was pulled back up into the sky. As Peter, puzzled, sat there, trying to figure out what it all meant, the men went by Cornelius showed up at Simon's front door. They called in, asking if there was a Simon, also called Peter, staying there. Peter, lost in thought, didn't hear them, so the spirit whispered to him, Three men are knocking at the door looking for you. Get down there and go with them. Don't ask any questions. I sent them to get you. Peter went down and said to the men, I think I'm the man that you're looking for. What's up? They said, Captain Cornelius, a God-fearing man, well known for his fair play, 
ask any Jew in part of the country, was commanded by a holy angel to get you and bring you to his house so he could hear what you had to say. Peter invited them in and made them feel at home. The next morning, he got up and went with them. Some of his friends from Joppa went along. A day later, they entered Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had his relatives and close friends waiting for him. The minute Peter came through the door, Cornelius was up on his feet greeting him and then down on his face worshiping him. Peter pulled him up and said, None of that. I'm a man and only a man. No different than you. And here ends our readings for the day.